Let's do some iFinity benchmarks, shall we? Now, first off, if you're going to do iFinity, you need to get monitors with small bezels. So we went for the Asus VN247H. Now, these monitors are 23.6 inches, 1080p, and the bezel is less than one centimeter. The response time's one millisecond. They also have 80 million to one. Uh, it's like a dynamic contrast ratio. I believe Asus calls it the Asus Smart Contrast Ratio. Uh, but basically what they do is adjust the backlight luminance on the fly to give you like nice deep tones and bright whites, et cetera, et cetera. But it looks, it just looks really good. Now this monitor has two HDMI ports, uh, audio pass-through and also uh, VGA. They have included an HDMI to DVI cable in the box. So we actually grabbed these three monitors so that we could play Osmos on three screens. And then we realized that a lot of the modern games will work just fine with a 7970 across three monitors. For the benchmarks, let's talk about the system specs. We're using the Asus P8Z77V Pro for the motherboard. It's loaded, tons of features, easy to overclock with, so that's a really good way to go. For the CPU, we've got a 3770K, that's an i7, and it's overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. For the hard drive, we've got a Kingston HyperX 3K, it's 128 gigabytes. For the RAM, we went for overkill. We've got 32 gigabytes of Kingston 2400 megahertz beast RAM. Using 32 gigabytes of memory is not really going to improve our gaming performance, but we just had it in the system and didn't take it out, so that's what we tested with. For the graphics card, we have the Asus 7970 Direct CU2, and we use GPU tweak to overclock it to 1125 megahertz. And powering the system, we have the uh, Seasonic 850 watt gold certified PSU. So now we did not benchmark every game totally maxed out. We benchmark games um, at a playable resolution. So we tried to find exactly what we could keep above 30. That was the goal, keeping everything above 30. And then we did that benchmark and let you guys know what it was. Now, first off, we did Crisis. And I'm going to give you guys the average and the high and the low uh, for the FPS. So Crisis at 5750 by 1080. We were running 16x anisotropic filtering. We were also running FXAA. We had the Texture resolution set to medium, but everything else was on very high, like the water, all the effects, shadows, uh, post-processing, all that set to very high. The average was 35.32. The minimum was 30, and the max was 42. We cranked it down just a little bit so we could get a smoother or a faster um, frame rate. 4800 by 900, all the settings uh, just like I mentioned before. The average was 43.56. Uh, the low was 39 and the high was 55. So you can see there on three monitors uh, at medium I thought crisis looked really really good on medium. Now the filters are only turning on FXAA uh, It's cheaper um, Than you know running the filters at max, but it doesn't look that much different There's a little bit of blurring, uh, but it's better than Jaggies and it I mean It allows us to play the game. All right moving on to Far Cry 3 now, Far Cry 3 was just really not playable at full res. Um, you know, at, at 5750 by 1080, no matter what I did, it just didn't want to play. However, at 4800 by 900, uh, with the, you know, textures on high, we had no filters. We got 35.76 frames per second. 31 was the minimum, and 48 was the maximum. Moving on to Natural Selection 2. Now, we tried this game with a few different settings. At, at the maximum settings, 5750 by 1080, everything maxed out. Uh, it was 26.12 frames per second, and it dipped all the way down to 22. Uh, the high was only 31, so I don't consider that a playable frame rate. Now, in order to make this game smooth, I turned off anti-aliasing and turned down ambient occlusion to medium. I left anisotropic filtering on. Everything was fine. The average now is 38.68. And the low was 34 and the high was 44. It felt really playable. It actually felt really smooth. Smoother than most games at that frame rate would feel, so that's nice. Trine 2. Now when you turn Trine 2 all the way up, the filters just absolutely murder your gameplay. So at 5750 by 1080 uh, at the maximum, 23.44 frames per second. However, if you just switch it over to FXAA and turn off the rest of the filters, you're just fine. It, it actually runs really nice. Uh, 4800 by 900 and we got 75.76 frames per second. There's not a lot of peaks and there's not a lot of lows. 73 and 79, that was the low and the high. So you can see it's very, very fluid. Um, we could also turn this up to 5750 by 1080 and just leave on FXAA instead of all the other filters and you'll be just fine. You can play this game all day. So there you have it. I just wanted you guys to start thinking about monitors and start thinking about, you know, what you guys can do with three monitors, especially if you have a nice small bezel like this. And I do want to say, if you guys are, are using Windows 8 and you're on one monitor, you're crazy. I don't even know how anybody can, can use a computer without more than one monitor, you know, period. But if you're on Windows 8 and you've only got one monitor, you're, you're absolutely crazy. You need multiple monitors for Windows 8, especially if you're on the desktop. And while I'm at it, uh, I'm also going to recommend uh, Start is Back.
Just go to startersback.com and thank me later. It's the best $3 you're ever going to spend if you're on Windows 8. It really turns Windows 8 into Windows 7 uh, just with all the bonuses from Windows 8. So you guys will enjoy that quite a bit. And you'll still have your goofy start you know, menu if you really want it. But I don't know who's going to want that on a desktop anyway. So there you have it. Start thinking about some iFinity gaming. Uh, this, this graphics card can really handle it. And, uh, you know, these monitors are about as good as it gets. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can always email me, inbox at techsyndicate.com, or just head over to the forum. That's where everybody's hanging out. I'll see you there.